Hello students. Today we will learn about the absorption of carbohydrate. Yesterday we have learnt in detail about the digestion process of carbohydrate in our body. But today we will learn about the absorption process. Welcome to Educators, myself Manjishta Chatterjee. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe Educators. Now, absorption of carbohydrate, let us just uh, give a brief uh, discussion about how we are getting the um, particles or the substrate for absorption. So, whenever we are taking any kind of carbohydrate, we are taking in the form of polysaccharides or disaccharides and sometimes monosaccharides as well. So, what our aim is, our aim is always to convert the polysaccharides or disaccharides, whatever form we are getting, to monosaccharides before it gets to the brush border for absorption. Now, carbohydrate absorption always begins with the, after the digestion of the carbohydrate takes place from starch glycogen, that is from polysaccharide, disaccharide to or oligosaccharide into monosaccharide which then move to the enterocyte brush border for the absorption. Now, monosaccharides in which form we are getting? We are getting in the form of glucose, fructose and galactose. Always keep in mind that glucose, fructose and galactose, out of these three, glucose and galactose are absorbed in the same manner, whereas fructose is absorbed in slightly a different manner. So, now there are two types of uh, membranes of the small intestine, small intestine enterocytes rather. One is, the, one is the apical membrane, another one is the basolateral membrane. So, if you can see that this is the bas uh, a simple epithelium, a section from here it has been shown. So, we have two sides. One is the apical side with the hair-like, finger-like projections. This is the apical membrane. And on the, uh, on the opposite side or the basement membrane, we also have the basolateral membrane. So, monosaccharides always remember that they are hydrophilic in nature. And for this nature, for this behavior, they always try to move the nutrient across the membrane. That means from one side to another side of the membrane, they always move. So, they always get absorbed by moving across the membrane membrane. Now over here we can see suppose we are having the lactose just a basic example has been given this is the cytoplasm okay this is the membrane. Now the lactose one form of glucose plus one form of galactose is there. So what happens on this lactose the lactase enzyme acts and it breaks them this lactose into glucose and galactose. So, one molecule of glucose and one molecule of galactose. This glucose and galactose always move across this membrane. As I told you before that these move across this membrane due to their hydrophilic nature with the help of this SGLT1 or sodium dependent glucose transporter 1. So, with the active transport we can say with the help of this sodium and ATP ADP change or usage of use of uh, energy this glucose and galactose move across the membrane to the cytoplasm. Now coming into the detail so one we have the apical membrane transport and the next we have the basolateral membrane transport. In this apical membrane transport, glucose and galactose, as I told, they are moving across the apical membrane by SGLT or sodium dependent glucose co-transporter. And over here, the sodium and potassium ATP is, that is an energy uh, active transport as it is, an energy intake and outtake is also, uh, intake is also associated. So, what happens? The sodium potassium ATPase, they provide a low sodium environment within this enterocyte, which allow the sodium to be as a driving force across the membrane. So, what happens? So, suppose this is the uh, glucose, the red one showing the glucose. This glucose is coming over here and 
due, due to the sodium potassium atps uh, this uh, environment the environment produced by that which results in a low sodium environment it helps the glucose to move across the membrane and it is transported by uh, a glut 2 or glucose transporter 2 as you can see fructose is also transported by glut glut 5 as you can see over here it, it is transported across the membrane first with the uh, transporter glucose transporter 5 and then glucose transporter 2 to the blood but they don't use any uh, ATP is sodium potassium ATP is or they don't need any active transport but fructose is transported from the luminal membrane to the blood in a facilitated diffuse, uh, diffusion process. Now coming to this basolateral membrane transport what happens with the help from the in, inter, inside of the enterocyte to the interstitium it is facilitated by the two type of transporter glucose transporter one is glut 2 and another one is glut 5 glut 2 transport both glucose and galactose as you can see because glucose and galactose they have similar kind of structure which helps them to transport in a similar pattern whereas glut 5 helps in transport of the fructose along uh, across the basolateral membrane and after that fructose diffuse into the portal, uh, portal circulation moving to the liver. So, all these carbohydrates are basically absorbed by uh, GLUT2 and GLUT5 along with where glucose and galactose is helped by the sodium dependent glucose or uh, uh, moved across with the help of sodium dependent glucose transporter. So I hope you have understood the absorption of carbohydrate. That's all for today. Thank you. Stay tuned with educators.